Hello and welcome back. So today, in honor of Leap Day, as well as for, dare I say, a class assignment, I here present with great love and dedication to the whole world, Inupiaq versus Greenlandic Kalashisut, a comparison for beginners. And happy Leap Day, the most unique day of the Gregorian calendar. Um, so chances are you clicked on this video, but you might not exactly know exactly what Inupiaq and Kalachisut actually are. So these are both Eskimo Aleut languages, in particular Inuk languages that are spoken within um, northern Alaska, northern Canada, and Greenland. That's where the entire family is spoken, but the Aleutian languages, which are also more di distant relatives of the I Inuk languages, are spoken primarily in central Alaska as well as in Siberia as well. And so Inupiaq and Kalashisut are actually family members, but exactly how close of family members they are is going to be determined by the scope of this video. Um, I don't think I should surprise you with too much right out of the gate. So, the first difference is pronunciation. As you can see, Inupiaq does actually include many letters that come with diacritics, uh, as opposed to Kalashisut, which does not use them. Although, in Danish loanwords and in place names, it will use letters like O, or what you might know as the O with the circle on it. And one result of this is that... Uh, Kalashisut uses something that's very, very similar to the standard English keyboard. And so I'll go ahead and I'll read the Kalashisut or the Greenlandic portion, which is something, uh, was my bar mitzvah haftara actually, Obadiah 1 1. So I'll go ahead and I'll read it and I'll point out exactly some of the pronunciation differences um, after I'm done reading it. Uh, so, one thing to note is that there are diphthongs present in Greenlandic that are going to be pronounced slightly differently in the Nupiak. So, one thing to note is that the I-A is actually pronounced as It's a let us wage war. And the I-A is actually pronounced more mathematically in Greenlandic than it is in Inupiaq, where it's pronounced all because of the A. And so, that's one noteworthy difference. Another one is that the T-I combination is actually pronounced not like T, but T. And so an Inupiaq speaker would pronounce the T-I very much like an English speaker normally would. However, Nalunariatotzitak, meaning uh, a messenger, or uh, yeah, it's mess like someone who makes something not known. Yeah, that's I think that's messenger. Nalunariatotzitak, um, that refers to uh, a messenger and the T, the T I at the end indicates a T. It's not na na lu na That's um, not proper. And so na lu na Okay. So that's one very important difference to really note. In addition to the fact that while there are various sounds that are also found in Inupiaq, uh, most notably the sh sound is actually written in Greenlandic with the two L's, hence pishlugu, meaning about. And one result of this is that it's actually going to be written differently in Inupiaq, where it's written with, as an L with a line through it. And I'll go ahead and I'll read the Inupiaq to the best of my ability. Full disclosure, I've been learning this language primarily since, well, January. So, here we go. Uva kilitukta obadayam kamanaktuam See, you, I caught myself there because I pronounce it like T-I. It's supposed to be Tilinganga Kiliktuiri Nunao Raunun Asi Tusanga Tusangaput Kiliktuta. Iti kagnayayag itchi 
ang ang goyang ni Reag Lakput Nunak Panga Edom. So one thing to keep in mind is the fact that uh, I apologize if it's a little bit weak, but I guess it's quite good given the five weeks I've had already. So the R, the the G, pronounced with a uh, with a dot on it, is uh, sing is this does not exist in Greenlandic. So uh, and that's God, I believe. Uh, so that's one noteworthy difference. Um, and then another thing is that the uh, I'm not exactly certain what that means. Uh, I also do not would indicate a land. And then this letter here would actually indicate the ng sound in English. Um, so there, um, that sound also exists in Greenlandic, but it's written with the ng instead. In addition to this, the consonants are a little bit more segregated. And so, um, to give an example within this text, so, Kiliktuta, or Kiliktuta, um, or Kamanaktuam. And so, one result of this is, uh, like, Nerlik, which means a goose, you actually don't tend to squish consonants in Inupiak the same way that you normally do in Kalashisut, which is done a lot more often. And now we also get to the fact that Inupiak and Kalashisut are. Roughly, they follow a lot of the recipes in the exact same way. And so Inuit languages work thus. There is a prefix, and then you, there is not a prefix, it's a base word, and then you put a bunch of words on it in order to build a Lego block of a word. And so one example of this would be the Greenlandic word, which means, please, I would like to talk to you for a bit. And that's made up of a um, significant amount of words. I'm not going to count exactly how many right now. But the issue is that the very first thing I learned about Greenlandic from A Lonely Planet Guide to Iceland, Greenland, and the Faroe Islands, which also ended up inspiring covering Inuk Adventures, which is still in development but will be out by the end of this year. Um, the issue is that you put various suffixes on both nouns and verbs in order to change their meanings. And so one result is that if you put oswat at the end of a Greenlandic word, that means big or fat. And so one result of this is nuna refers to a land, sila refers to weather, but nuna swat, big land, actually refers to planet Earth, and sila swat can refer to the universe, literally big weather. And so that's one example of this. And then nguat also goes on the end of something in order to indicate small thing. And lastly, um, we're gonna go, before I go ahead and I compare these to the Inupiat equivalents, we have fik which is place where you do X, where X is the noun before it. So a cute example of this is the Greenlandic word for buffet, which is biffik, which means place something. That That's what it is, like something place, thing place. Um, I know it doesn't really translate too well, so biffik is a buffet. And so bi is a exist or something, and then biffik is something place. And so in Yupiat, we can actually see that it's very similar in... Um, in, in um, comparing the fig suffix. So vik is also found in Ilisagvit, which is Alaska's only tribal college, not the uh, presence of the v, the g with the dot, as we sometimes like to call it in class. And what's more, Ilisagvit means study place. Hence, being a purism, we're going to get on more um, to those later on, that is present in Inupia. And then as to what Uswak and Nguak would actually be in Yupiat, we actually have the slightly different Pak and Uwak, which indicates big and small, respectively. And the same thing also works for suffixes and infixes concerning verbs. But it's also interesting to note that even on the very basic level, there is significant um, deviation for, um, from the two languages. So the it in Inupiaq actually indicates a negative infix, and then in Kalashi, so that would be ngi. And so, ayung ngilak literally means it is not bad. That's how you would say it is good. And so then um, the sa indicates the future marker, and then in Inupiaq, that's nap. And sometimes there are also entire 
um, suffixes that exist in one language that don't exist in the other, including this one, sare, which means to deliberately do something. And I might be mistaken, but I don't think that there's any Greenlandic equivalent to that. Feel free to go ahead and let me know if I am mistaken. And now we get to the intransitive verbs. The verb systems between Inupiaq and Kalashisu do offer a lot of parallelisms, as far as I know. One noteworthy difference is the fact that you can actually turn verb endings into participles, or by extension adjectives, by swapping out the V or the P in Greenlandic adjectives with the T. And um, I'm not really advanced enough in Inupiaq to exactly really know if anything like this exists, but based on what I know right now, this is probably not the case. And so this is just a small sample of what variety of verb endings exist in the two languages concerning the statements of intransitive verbs. Now, if we were to get to both intransitive verbs of both Inupiaq and Kalashisut, we would need a table of them to indicate like I, they, the I do something to them, I do something to you. And so, for example, asavakit is in Greenlandic how you would say I love you, but asavakka is how you would say I love them. And really the only difference is the conjugation that actually indicates the I, you singular form versus the I, them form. And imagine having to memorize all of those. So, one thing that Inupa and Kalashisut share is the fact that certain verbs actually have certain stems based on the what variety of verb word comes right beforehand. And so, as a result, these endings that we see on the right side here, so punga is the I intransitive statement ending. And um, with some variety of verbs that would be vunga, and then with the K stem that would be bunga with two P's, or with the R stem would be ohpunga with an R right beforehand. Like ayohpunga means I am doing badly, literally I am bad. And so punga, putit, pok, put, pusi, and put. A note, another thing that I do is that I pronounce the T, especially at the end of words, with a hint of a T sound, like a which means welcome in Greenlandic to one person, to multiple people be, would be and Inupiaq actually offers the following instead. So, Tunga uh, and the Runga, very, very similar to the Greenlandic. Tutin and Rutin, referring to the, um, to the U singular ending. Um, people who speak Inupiaq better than I do, that is to say I'm probably a hop, a skip, and a jump away from A1, if I'm being very, very generous, I've noticed that they have more of an American-influenced accent, which I think is correct, obviously given historical reasons. Um, and moving on, so tuk and rok is very, very similar in, in this respect. But one thing that Inupiaq does have that Kayashisut is lacking completely is the dual form. And we're going to get more into that later on. That's found with the presence of K at the end of things. So what we do is, uh, so tuk and the rukuk refers to the two of us intransitive statement ending, because if you were to turn it into a question, it would be different. And then tugu is, I know I put that twice um, by accident, is the we for the three of them ending. Now, if we want to do that for the they, that would be tuk, ruk, and then tut and rut accordingly. And it's interesting because the T ending found in Inupia, if we were to do that in Kalachisut instead, as we're going to demonstrate when we show the colors, that's actually the adjectival participial form. And so the tok ending in Greenlandic means the one who is blank, as opposed to X is blank. So for example, so I'm thinking of something. So ayotok means bad, literally the one who is bad. And ayotok is it is bad. So the T-O-Q, the tok indicates uh, the adjectival participial form. And then the pok is the verb form. And I think in many of the Inuit languages, it becomes very clear, at least in Greenlandic, that the differences between nouns and verbs can be very, very blurred. Think almost like lolcat or some varieties of internet slang, for example. And now we get to the vowels. So 
Inupia, very much like its siblings in Canada, has three vowels. We have a, e, and u. And Inupia only uses the Latin alphabet. Um, they, they do actually use the exact same letter scheme accordingly. Now, in Greenlandic, you probably remember from the Bible text that there were uh, O's and E's as well. However, keep in mind that these are nothing more but morphed versions of I and U. And so with the QR rule, what happens, we can see this in the previous page, is that the U turns to an O if it is if it proceeds an R or a Q. But if the R or the Q goes away, then it transforms back into a U again. And uh, one result of this is that I think that this actually makes sense because this makes Greenlandic, at least the way I know it, a lot more mathematical in terms of its pronunciation. And so to compare a word that's the same in both languages almost. So qim is a dog in both, but that's actually written due to the QR rule as EQ at the end as opposed to IQ in, um, in Inupia. So on to the next one. Uh, the dual form does not exist in Greenlandic, but in verbs and in nouns in Inupia, this is often noted by the presence of k at the end. So some of these can be irregular. So while we refer to miluk referring to one breast, miluk refers to two breasts. And then inuk, which also was the reason that Americans pronounced the word inuit, because of Alaska, uh, that would be inyuk, referring to two people. And so the dual form is not entirely exclusive to uh, verbs in Inupia, and that's very important to note. Now we get to the issue of foreign loan words. Uh, if you've probably seen the um, I Love Languages channel and their video of Inupia, you've probably noticed that the from the pieces of the Christian scriptures, uh, phrases like Jesus and Jude are actually pronounced exactly the same way that they are in English as well. Um, for obvious reasons, Inupia does tend to use a lot of the English loan words more often, although it does so extremely sparingly, based on what I know, in comparison to the way that Greenlandic actually uses Danish loan words. To give you uh, what some people might consider a scary example, but you get completely used to it, all numbers 13 and higher in Greenlandic are expressed with straight up Danish numbers. And we're going to get to comparing the number system, yes, on the next page. And so one result of this is that we actually see the various numbers. There is some crossover, but it's not complete. So I'll go ahead and read the Galatisut ones. We have Nullu, an obvious Danish loanword. Atasak, Mashluk, Fingasut, Sisamat. If you're counting, but if you're actually count, um, referring to things in sentences, and uh, I forgot, um, and that's the um, that it, that refers to nine regarding to things in a sentence. Now there are some dialectical forms that I actually left out. Kalasisu uh, very much like Inupia also do have various dialectical forms. And within Ilisagvik, you actually are encouraged to study the variety of dialect that your ancestors spoke, or whatever variety of community you're working with. And now it's time for me to humiliate myself even more and try the Inupiaq numbers. So Suichuk, that's uh, zero. And then Kisichitsagvik okay. is another word for zero. Not the vik at the end indicates thing that has or thing that there are. And then the rest of them Ataosik, and then Maluruk, Bingasut, Sisamat, Talimat. Notes the, that the Greenlandic, despite the fact that it's the same, is pronounced Tashimat, and then this one is Talimat. Um, Ichakthra, the SR, also has a unique thing in, um, like, the word for a, squir uh, for a squirrel is a Sigrik, which is written S I K S R I K. So Sigrik. So Ichakrat Talimat Malruk Talimat Pingasut Kulingu uh oy 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 Kulingu Gu Tailak and then Kulit. Um and so as you can see there definitely is some crossover. And then Yupia actually decided to purify its own system completely, uh very much making a system like what's present in 
many other languages without borrowing a number system from something else. Uh, now we can compare some basic phrases accordingly. Um, so, bin is how you would say, how are you, in Inupia, as opposed to the Kalashisut thing, um, and then you can obviously see exactly how those are, that's the same phrase, effectively put together with the puzzle pieces present in the different languages, treasuries, as it were. And then to say, I am well, which can also mean I am happy in Inupia, you can say, Nakurunga, that's I am well, and then to say then Kalachi Sut, you literally say, I am not bad, so Ayung Yilanga, and then to say, what is your name, um, despite the fact that this is also done in the Polynesian languages, I don't think that there's any connection, because Akinya Akhtakin actually literally means who is your name, and then um, Atira, or Uvanga, refers to my name is, and then Uvanga is I, the Greenlandic word is Uanga, so it's very, very similar in that respect. And then to say, what is your name? You don't say, who is your name, but literally, how do you have a name? Which in Greenlandic would be, uh, literally, how name have you, singular question form. And then I would say, literally, I am, I am having with the name Jared. And in case you're probably curious, don't you remember the punga form actually being the intransitive form? Well, it's interesting because you can use mik, meaning with, in Greenlandic, in order to actually bypass the requirement for a transitive verb. And the, I believe that Inupiat does have a very similar mechanism in this respect. And now, question words, compare. So, qanuk means how, which, and then qanuk in Greenlandic, also similar in that respect. So, qapsinyit, how many, versus qasit, in uh, so you can definitely see the fact that language evolution, regardless of where you are in the world, plays a game of telephone. And then suva is what, literally, what is this, because it also has a variety of different forms. And in Greenlandic, that would be suna, or sunana, is literally what is that. Um, sumi, nami, or nang, is where. And then sumipa, where is it, in nak is how you'd say where in Greenlandic. You can definitely see the similarities. And then sorna or sok is the Greenlandic for why. And then the various forms in Inupiaq for why would be sukman, sukman, and suvata. And lastly, the forms for who are very different from English by virtue of the fact that they are numbered. So in Inupiaq, you do have the dual form of kisuk, as well as kisut, and then kinya. And then in kalachisut, we have kinna and kikut as well. And now we have the colors. You can probably see that there is significantly, there is virtually no crossover in this whatsoever, as well as the fact that there are many other terms to refer to red in kalachisut. Uh, yeah, Hungarian only has two, and English really, well, English also has a bunch of them as well, and maybe Hungarian also has more. But um, meanwhile, back in the Arctic, Kavikzak uh, refers to red in Inupiaq, but that's apalutok in um, Greenlandic, and then sungaraktak is blue, tungyoktok in Greenlandic, sungaraktak is green, and then kosuk in Kalachisut, sepinyakpala means is orange, actually, it's literally sun color, and then sepinyak is the Greenlandic word, so they actually do use the same word for sun, but they don't use the same word for orange. And the word for orange in um, Greenlandic is literally yellow with a yellow with a good dash of red in it. I think that's what it is. So sungatok apaluatok, and so note the t o q ending indicates that it's an adjective or a participial form. And then kuksukta is yellow, and then sungatok is that in um, Greenlandic. Then mangatok is black. Anartok is black in Kalashisut, and then Tinguk Pala, Kayortok, and then Katiktak and Kakotok. And Kakotok, yes, is also the name of the city in southern Greenland that's very well known for its colorful houses. Now for the conclusion. The pronunciation between the two languages is significantly different, as we've seen. The orthographies are different. 
The biggest difference within the grammar, at least on the elementary level, is the dual. The fact that Inupiaq does have it, whereas opposed to Greenlandic, which does not. The verb conjugation is very similar, including the various portions of verb conjugation that we haven't gone into in this presentation. Plenty of cognates exist, however, in certain realms they do go completely differently. But to give you another example, so tuttu in um, Greenlandic refers to reindeer, but that's actually caribou in uh, Alaska. No, in Alaska. Did I just say that? In Europe, yeah, I'm sorry. And uh, avak is the word for a walrus, which is avak in uh, in Europe, yeah. uh, Greenlandic does have a good deal of foreign words, but it is relegated to certain domains concerning colors, concerning games, concerning um, metallurgy or what have you. And then all in all, these are like two recipes, largely using the same ingredients, but in different proportions, with the exception of the Danish being present in Greenlandic while being completely absent in Inupia. And with that, I invite you to go ahead and let me know if there is anything that I should be corrected about, or if you have any questions you'd like me to ask, answer or ask in a follow-up video. Have a good run, and see you next time.